Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 26th and welcome to my big mess here. I'm going to put together or attempt to put together a shop stool, bar stool, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they had these, they're dumping them. I guess they haven't been built in three years. The company I contacted said they hadn't made these in three years but there's still a whole bunch of new stock around so I decided to get one of these and I will attempt to put it together. Uh, it's really cool. They, they, they included a little gadgety kind of tool here. It's a uh, Allen wrench, Allen wrench, and a Phillips screwdriver on the other end. So you could actually assemble it that way if you wanted to. And a little sheet metal wrench here. A little, you know, basically just a piece of sheet metal. But I'm going to use a little bit better tools to kind of speed up the operation. Anyway, I asked for people to submit some uh, gadget type of videos or uh, tool videos or anything like that. And I got two people to submit. Uh, first off, uh, it's going to be my friend Mary J from California, and then after that, my friend Bill C that lives just west of Indianapolis, Indiana. So, take it away, Mary. Hello, Chuck. This is Mary Hussington, and I'm in my kitchen. And today, I am going to share with you one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. It's the Braun Hand Blender, and it features a few items that I really love. The first one would be this mini chopper. It's like you could throw all your goodies in there like berries and maybe a little milk and ice or whatever you want to throw in there that makes you happy and blend it up pretty easily. It's pretty easy to use. There you go. I'm telling you how easy it's to use and I'm having a little trouble. <laughs> but anyway, this top part, here let me put the camera down. That goes right in there for the uh, little mini blender. Whoa, that was the fast speed. And then also what I love about this is that I can use this stick blender, attaches easily. See how easy? I one-handed that one. And then it goes right into the pot while I'm cooking. See, look, pretend there's sauce in there. <laughs> See, there's Mary making her awesome enchilada sauce. But two, what I love about it is that it comes with this whisk and that thing Man, it's awesome because I can make pancakes in a jiffy. So I hope you are loving my gadget as much as I do. Uh, this one I've had for over 10 years now. Well, almost 10 years. Not over. Almost 10 years. And it's still working like brand new. So I would, if I were a cook or if any of your friends are cooks, this is the kind of system I would look up and buy. It's really, really a good system. I paid probably about 70 bucks 10 years ago, which was a lot of money. But now they are about 100 bucks. You can get a similar uh, little set for, the, for about 100 bucks. And it's well worth it if you do not like to go out and eat and if you want to eat fresh and healthy like I do. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, moving right along. Next up, I have my friend Bill C. from just west of Indianapolis. I'm just going to give you a three-minute preview of his video where he's building a slot punch, making it from scratch. He is a, a blacksmith, so if you would... Uh, uh, watch the first three minutes of his video, and then down in the description, I will give you the link to his uh, full video to where he makes it from uh, start to finish. The quality, for some reason, uh, we don't know. We were fooling around with it a little bit, trying to get better quality. For some reason, on his full-length video, the quality really dropped down on YouTube, but I still think it's good enough to give you an idea of what he's doing. I think it still, it still works out okay. So uh, go ahead and check out his video, and I will be back, hopefully, with a little more progress on my uh, shop stool. And here's the project on the agenda. A slitting punch. I made this for the Covered Bridge Indiana Blacksmith Association meeting this coming month. To be put in the iron in the hat. 
I'll put this punch in the ironing hat and then a piece of a coil spring just like it about the same length anyway and it'll be a punch slice chisel kit so somebody can get a chisel or a punch and somebody can get a kit to make their own and here is a slot I've already tested it make sure it works there's a slot I cut with it that's how big a slot it cuts nice and clean and there was no mushrooming on the end you can see just if you look real close you can see where <clears throat> it colored going through the hot steel I have a piece of automobile coil spring here that I've straightened out and I use straighten in the least of the sense there's no sense in getting out of hand on getting it straight where you're not going to be forging on it the first thing I'm going to do is start a hexagon on the end here I've already done this end but I thought I'd stop and do the other end and make a video of it. So this being high carbon steel, we don't want to work it too hot. But we also don't want to work it cold. So it's in and out of the fire a lot. Now, the first thing we're going to do is about a hammer's width, establish a flat. Get my brush out here. So I've got a flat spot. Now we turn it 60 degrees, which is about right there. And establish another flat. Another 60 degrees. And another one. Now, where the anvil was on the opposite side, you should have the starting of a flat in the right spot and it looks to me like I've hit that one about right so we've got we've got our hexagon started there and it's back in the fire now I like to get about a hammer's width of this established then I can carry that shape on up the on up the chisel I'm going to keep the mill scale cleaned off your forge so all you do is pound in imperfections So here's the story for the month of September. Uh, it will be the TDD report will be on hiatus for uh, Route 66 reports because I will be leaving in about seven days to go out towards Iowa and then drop down to Kansas City and then from there pick up Route 66 and do the next one third of the trip of Route 66. So I would like to uh, invite all of you to, uh, even though you'll be missing the TDD reports for about a month I would invite you to join me on uh, my Route 66 trip with my friend Bob 1954 Shadow. I will be posting both on YouTube and on Facebook. It will be probably 90% videos without a lot of editing, just raw footage because I find if I wait to try to edit the video I get so far behind I just kind of give up and don't post anything. So basically it will just be thrown up stuff about the trip but I hope you enjoyed it. Some of the sites we'll be seeing. So. Take care, everybody, and I will catch you on the TDD report in October.